This one's gonna spread out all over those noodles. That tastes really good. And so that's the goal. And then it's and then once we get the meat going on. <laughs> anyway. Tim Parnell here, and you're on uh, Cooking with Tim, and I've got my first guest uh, cook with me today, which I mean, are you a cook? No, I am not a cook at all. Me and my wife eat out three meals a day. Why the heck are you here right now? Um, we're here to, to, to pair our wines with your amazing food. That's right. So this right here, this is why Chris is here, okay? This is Chris Gillum, uh, owner of Blue Line Winery. And uh, we, we did a, a video separately on that if you wanna learn more about it. But we're, we, as you can see, we've already cracked the bottles We've gotten into it and uh, and man, there's some delicious stuff here. But we're gonna pair the wines with a meal and the meal today is spaghetti carbonara, which basically means spaghetti with meat, okay? So this is a dish that I cook in my house. Um, my kids love it, the family loves it. It's easy, it's quick. And so add it to your, add it to your meal plan um, and, and just have fun with it, okay? There's no one way to make this dish right. It's spaghetti, it's it's a green leafy Italian leaf. So like I prefer basil, but right now today we've got Italian parsley. Why, Bill? Because the, the store didn't have my basil that I needed. So it's garlic, eggs, room temperature, and then uh, an Italian meat, in this case, a pancetta. And then we've also got a capicola. The other things is, and so the, let me just say this. When I normally make this, I'll show you how it looks. This is what I make it with, okay? Pull this out. It is normally basil, but in this case, Italian par parsley, garlic, egg, pancetta, noodles, feta, olive oil, salt, and pepper. That's it, okay? That's it, super simple. Now, today we're gonna hype it up a little bit. A little, uh, part of the reason we're, we're kinda hyping it up is because we're, when I went to the grocery store, they didn't have some of the ingredients I needed. So, and then I thought maybe they didn't have other ingredients. Like I was told they didn't have pancetta. Can you believe? I, they said they didn't have it. And then I saw it in the case and so he pulled it out. So I already committed to capicola, which is delicious. And normally you eat these meats super thinly sliced, but in this case, we're actually, I mean, look at this. this is, I mean, it just looks delicious, but normally it's super thin sliced but we're, we actually took it in finger thick slices. Three of these is about a half pound, just to give you an idea. And so if I was just gonna do a half pound of the meat, I would do about half or eight ounces of the spaghetti to make sure that the, uh, there was enough to go around. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and make it in bulk today because uh, not only are Chris and I gonna eat, but we're gonna serve the family later. And, uh, but the other things you gotta have is some good quality eggs at room temperature, okay? Room temperature matters because, well, when we put the eggs in, they're going in raw, and when the spaghetti cooks and heats up and we put that spaghetti into the egg, the egg will bring all the ingredients together and cook onto the noodles, which is where that specific type of dish comes from, that, that carbonara. So um, that's what we're gonna do. Now, what we're also doing is we're combining the pecorino rom romano and the parmesan. Now, because I'm cooking in bulk today, it's okay that I get a lot more of these ingredients, all right? But it's, you can substitute any of these in or out if you can only find some. That's the cool part about it. Cooking should, I mean, for me, I don't cook by recipe. Uh, maybe I start the first recipe out and then I get into, well, you know what? Now I know how to do it, let me have my own fun with it. So that's where I started going with feta. It just made it a little creamier for me. But uh, that's what we're doing today. So stick around for this one and uh, I hope you like it. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment or subscribing below. So, all right. So what we're gonna do, because I want, I want Chris making this, because as you heard, Chris said- I'm not a cook and so I've got lots of questions. So he's, he's gonna hit me up with the stuff that some of you might- As you guys are learning, I'm gonna be learning. <laughs> that's it. And, and that's why I love doing this. So because Chris is my first guest on the show, I'm so excited because uh, you know, I want to. I want to. I, I want to bring 
what's going on in my community and, and who's doing what around my community to you. And so that's what we've got going on here with his wines. But at the same time, what I love about this is he has declared that he is not a <laughs> chef or a cook or anything. And that's awesome because I'm not a chef. I just like to cook and I enjoy it. And so for me, cooking is my love language, all right? I, I cook for people and it helps me to love on them and I can just share my food with them. And when they smile and they think, they ask me the question, well, what's the recipe on this? And I think to myself, there's not one. Uh, what I try to do at that point is say, well, I got a video on it, check that out. And so I'm gonna have Chris doing all this. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is, when you do this, you need a good quality knife. And if you don't have a good quality knife, at least make sure it's sharp, okay? So this is definitely a sharp quality knife and uh, it'll get the job done. The reason I think that's important is if you don't have the right tool for the job, it's gonna just make the job harder, okay? So in this case, really what we're gonna be doing is cubing, and I'll, I'll do the pinchetta, and you can do the okay. capicola deal. Yeah. So <clears throat> what we're gonna be doing, set these eggs out of frame. All we're doing is we're basically creating cubes that are about as thick, okay, as what we've got here. So we're just gonna, kind of do this and then we turn it sideways good chunky pieces do they have to be perfect no there's nothing that needs to be perfect all the flavors will come together in the end it'll be just fine so that's all we're doing and we'll scoot that off to the side and then we'll be sauteing it here in a little bit you want to take care of the rest of that yeah I'll do it can you stack them and do them yeah yeah if you want go for it all right I didn't know if that was like gonna create an issue so i probably shouldn't all right so I, i'm first, not gonna stop no no so first thing i would show you is yeah when you're holding a knife pinch it okay so that's why this is tapered so this is the difference between a quality knife and a not quality i'll show you okay here's two chef knives they do the same job they cut stuff up now when you really look at it this one doesn't have that pinched tapering at there and so if you use this one over time and you're trying to do bulk cooking i do a lot of bulk cooking this one started giving me blisters it was not comfortable this one over time is definitely much more comfortable it's a little heavier knife than i would normally like to go with but it works well so you pinch so, and then you wrap your fingers around okay so pinch and then just uh yep like that? Just kinda, I'm gonna do one at a time because this one is slide around. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Just get the com so, get comfortable with it. And then, uh, oh yeah, that's like way easier. Yep. So real quick, this just smells really good. Oh my gosh, it's, it it smells amazing. Quick question. Yeah. How many kids you got? I have four kids. Four kids. Um, 18, 17, 15, and 11. Yeah. So we're a busy family. And, and, and you... Do you need to be separated, the two types? Or no. No? Okay. Well, we'll throw it all in the skill together. And so you've got the, the winery. You've uh -huh. also got another business that you run. Yeah, so I, I started in 2006. I started a farmer's insurance agency. So I've been, I've been in the insurance business for a long time. And then uh, last year, in 2019, me and my wife decided to open up a winery. And so, um, and it's been a lot of fun. So that means you're busy, which is probably explains some of the eating out, right? I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, we're always on the go. Soccer, volleyball, you name it, we're doing it. And, uh, and so because of that, we catch a lot of fast food meals. Yeah. And so... It happens, man. Yeah. And so this, I mean, so this is, falls into that category of, of something simple to throw together. Once you, once you know how to do it, it's delicious. I mean, yeah, it's got the carbs and let's be honest, if you're an active family, you got soccer players in there, they gotta have the carbs. They gotta have that energy to burn. And so this is a great meal for that. So I'm glad we're doing this one because you know, maybe Chris can throw it together. I'm super uh, glad we're doing it. A home cooked meal for us is probably KFC. Well, there we go. So, so. We got, we got, we got to raise that up, man. I know. It's going to be great. If I nothing know. else, I'm going to have y'all over. We're going to do this. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and we'll, we'll put this in a bowl, but we, we're going to slice our, uh, garlic, garlic. Thank you. We're going to slice the garlic. And, and when I'll show you how to do that, let me get a bowl, put these in. Now, when, are you going to chop this up? So we will, we'll end up- Do you have uh, a machine for that? Nope. Oh my gosh. 
Order. Yeah, the noodles do need to go in later. If I'm <laughs> cutting that. It's, it's all about timing. And you know what? Whatever the timing is for you, that's what you do. That's why for me, it's not about put the noodles on the pot and let, make them start boiling. No, if, if it takes you a little longer to do the other activities, then delay that. It's whatever's right for you. Now, as far as the garlic goes, okay, when we're doing the garlic, okay, here's, here's the trick, okay, for, for cutting garlic. One, I like to take the brown part off. We can push that to the side, okay? So we'll do that, but then, Depending on what you want to do, I'm going to show you a couple techniques because we can go ahead and use it either way. One, you can smash it, right? If we're trying to take it down to um, kind of a paste, a garlic paste. And depending on what you're cooking, that may be beneficial. In this case, I want to do just slivers of garlic, but thin slivers. So what you want to do is pull your fingertip back. So God gave us these things called fingernails, right? And they keep you from slicing your fingers off and they protect them from knives. I don't know, it's high in sight. But what we're doing is I'm pulling my finger, fingertips back and I'm using this knife, okay, to kind of slice down so I'm not putting my fingers like this. That's bad. So mm. that's what we're doing. So I'm just, and then, and because a chef knife, the chef knife allows you to rock it. So we're just rocking. Now, when you do it, it may take your time and that's okay. And it may also be thicker slices and there's nothing wrong with that. Cause when we cook it, that, uh, that's all gonna get cooked down. It won't matter. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. Basically just some thinner slices and some of them are chunkier than others. So that's all right. But we want that in there because when we pick it up with a fork, we want to be able to taste that and have it as part of, you know, the rest of our meal. Um, the reason why you would want to paste is maybe you're trying to blend flavors into more of like a soup, something that's more brothy or creamier. Um, that would be the reason you'd make a paste. And, and what we do there was just kind of like chop, 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 oh. back and forth. And then we'd scrape it into the board. And because we're literally just pulling it out, we're scraping again. So that's how that would work. All right, so pull that all over there. You want to give it a shot? Yeah, for sure. So you know what you know what we need right now? What's that? Some wine. I'm in. You? Yeah. Did you see how I just cut that brown thing off? That was, Dude, that was, that was awesome. I pushed my brown thing over here with all these other ones. So we're gonna toss that. I'm gonna pour some wine. What do you want? I will have some of the cab. Cab's my favorite. Cab? That's this one, right? Where did you put the brown top part? You can just push it off to the side. I'll, okay. I'll toss it in. Is it this one's your glass, right? Yeah, it is. So now I do have the water boiling over here because, well, it's nice to have it ready to go. So I have a question for you. How long have you been cooking? I know you don't claim to be a professional cook, but you're pretty good. Um, how long have you been doing this? Okay, so I remember as far as when I started cooking. When my brother and I were staying home, he was four and a half years older than me, and he would stay home uh, basically as my babysitter, if you will. And, but he could drive. When he could drive and we had the summers off, we thought, you know, how cool would it be? Because we both worked. I mean, I worked since I was 12 with the family business. And so I had some money and he had some money. And, and so we'd go to the grocery store and we'd pick out, we'd basically decide we wanted to cook something. And so we started with just ramen, just good old top ramen, but we'd add in, you know, some meat and some egg and just make it a little fancier than just straight out of the bag. And so that kind of developed into, well, let's buy a cookbook. And so from about 12 to 13, we were cooking out of cookbooks, which is great foundation. Man, that looks good. Thanks. Do you want to do the, or no, just leave it. Go ahead and give it a, a, a few of those just to kind of spread out that love. And so, we, we, with that cookbook, you know, I bought an, an Italian cookbook. This, this, this recipe, funny enough, I bought that Italian cookbook when I was probably a freshman in high school. Oh, wow. And this recipe that I started out with came out of that cookbook. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So it's now I've enhanced it and I've changed it, but the, the foundational recipe is, is from that book. But 
For me, it's kind of a zen thing. Like everybody has their decompression activity. <laughs> this is great. This Dude, is thank you for bringing the wine, man. This, the 554 is delicious, by the way. Um, what is this? So that wine is one of our flagship bottles of wine. Um, and uh, it is a Merlot Cab Blend uh, with also a Concord grape, which makes it a little bit sweeter. Cab and Merlot tradi are traditionally a little bit more of a drier wine. And so when we blended it with some of the Concord grapes, it, it made it, it's a really nice red wine and it's not too dry, it's not too sweet. It's kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so uh, that wine there, we named it, it's one of our flagship wines because it's, it's, it's named after a police officer that died in the line of duty. And so, um, so that's what we decided to, to do is uh, name it after him. And then we donate the proceeds from the sale of that wine to a charity. Hoffer Red, right? Yep, Hoffer Red. And, uh, and his name was? His name was David Hoffer. In the bottom it says, in memory of David Hoffer, mm -hmm. end of watch, uh, March 1st, 2016. That's when he died in the line of duty. And the 554, some people call it, I want some of your 554 wine because they see that in big letters. That's actually, his, that was his badge number. And so um, the wine is actually called Hoffer Red. But if they, if you call me, you want to order 554, I know what you're wanting. And if you want to call it that, we'll have it shipped to you. This is so. delicious too. And I mean, honestly, it'd be one of my, my go-tos if I was going to be ordering this regularly or gifting it. I mean, I think that's it. And the cool part is that I didn't take into the benefit that when you buy this particular bottle, the money goes to a charity. Um, the charity specifically that, that the money goes to is a charity that supports their survivors of the officers that have died. So, um, you know, you never want to lose a loved one, but, uh, you know, it happens in law enforcement. They put on a uniform and risk their life every day. And uh, the ones that don't make it home, that organization steps in and takes care of the people that are left behind. And so it's amazing um, what they do and how they help. So they, when Officer Hoffer died, they were very instrumental um, there as well. And so that's what inspired us to do this. And so we love being able to tell Hoffer's story everywhere we go. Uh, he'll never be forgotten. And uh, hopefully we sell a lot of it and we can help make an impact on people's lives. And so um, it's what we do. And, and the owner, me and my wife are the owners of this, and she's a first responder. So it's just personal to us. Yeah. So that, I mean, that makes the mission even greater, right? I mean, it's personal. Yeah. And so I think that's awesome. But uh, now, I mean, that five five four is delicious. And uh, I mean, my wife's a fan of the Moscato. Is which one's a Moscato? The most tall one. The one. Yeah. yeah. So she's a fan of the Moscato right now. Of course, she does like this one too. So I think. Yeah. Oh man, so good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the egg and we want two of the yolks and we want one full egg. And that's because we have so much pasta that we're actually going to be um, cooking with this dish. It's because it's a bulk dish. So we could really, I mean, with 16 ounces of pasta, we could serve lots of people with that. And uh, that's why we're gonna have this many eggs. If you were going uh, more of a family of four, we'd only do about a half pound of the meat or three of those slices. Really, one egg would get you there. Um, one and a half, maybe one egg yolk and one full egg, and probably about a half cup of of any one of these cheeses or a combination. However, you want to work that out. Okay, so that's that's what you could do to to scale it down if you don't want to have to have as much as we're going to have by the time we're done. But uh, I like to cook in bulk because I like to just serve as many people as I can. Uh, it's just. It's an obsession. In getting the yolk out of this, what we're gonna do is smack it on a hard surface, flat surface. Some people say do it on a blade or whatever, but that just seems dangerous to me, honestly. So, kind of ro rotate it. So why do you not want the white? So the yellow part is what helps create the binding and, and make it kind of stick everything together oh. okay so that's why we want more of that yellow than we want of the white okay so that's it okay so we take that put it over into our bowl interesting you want to give it a shot here's uh, the cool part if if it, if it messes up it's okay you can just dump it in here okay so crack it and then you just want the yellow right so wait, wait so oh. tip it no you're good hold it over there uh -huh. like this yep and then open it up uh -huh. And then you're gonna pour that yellow into there. Boom. And just and then pour it back into itself. Perfect. And then dump it into here. 
Ooh. You got it. That's it. And that last one, that was, dude, that was perfect. Awesome. I was so, really nervous about that. So the next one is we'll, uh, oh my God. So do the same thing? <laughs> or do you want the whole egg? We want the whole egg this time. Okay. Yep. The flavors start coming together, okay? So we got salt, pepper, and the cheese, and that's pretty much it, okay? And so what we're gonna do is combine, we're gonna combine the uh, Pocorino Romano, okay? Just dump that in there. Parmesan. Now, you could call that done. You don't have to put the feta in there. I'm gonna put the feta in there because I've never done it with all three of these cheeses and why not? It's gonna be good. Can't have too much delicious cheese, but the problem with the feta is we need to break it up. All we're gonna do here is crumble. So if you want, just kind of pinch it, crumble. Yeah. And, uh, crumble it in there and there. Uh, you can crumble it in there, just kind of get it going and then even more uh, fine. It's crumbling his feta. So this is what's gonna make the dish extra special. I was talking to your fans while you were gone. Good. I had to go let the dog in because, uh, you know, this is a real show at a real home and it's my home and Charlie, uh, as y'all have seen on probably almost every episode at this point, he's on the back porch, uh, but he was, he was crying a little bit. So we're letting him in. Dude, you're doing great. Am I? You are. Yep. This is what's going to set it over the top. It is. So the pink salt is Himalayan. And so, so on the Himalayan salt, we, uh, I try to cook with it as much as possible because it has minerals that are part of the salt itself. It has a better flavor than just basic table salt, um, but also has the minerals. So as far as electrolytes, again, you got a family of, uh, that's very active sports mm -hmm. enthusiasts and they're playing a lot. Himalayan sea salt's awesome because you're putting those electrolytes back into the body, those minerals and nutrients that they're sweating out. I've never even and heard so of it. That's amazing. If you just simply trade it, I mean, again, if you're cooking at home, if you traded out your table salt for Himalayan sea salt, automatically you're going to be getting nutrients and, and minerals back into your body. You wouldn't, you're normally not replenishing. So hmm. that's why we do that. That's awesome. So on what, so what we're going to do here is uh, pepper. How much? I don't know. Um, to taste. Here's what's crazy. Some people think I'm crazy because I will taste just about anything um, as far as food goes. And, and I'll have a steak. And if I've seasoned it right, uh, I'll cut a sliver, taste a raw piece of steak. Because, I mean, if I'm going to cook it rare, it's, but you got to buy quality stuff to begin with. But I'll taste it because I want to know, did I get it right before I cook it? Mm. And so in this case, we're going to mix all this up, salt and pepper. We're going to taste it. If we like what we've got, that's going to translate to our dish. End of story, right? So That's awesome. So that's our pepper. Salt, again, how much? I don't know, ish. We don't need a lot of salt, though. Here's why. Um, our meat, this pancetta and, and capicola, is has got a lot of salt in that meat already. So we don't need a lot in here. And... Our feta and uh, our pocori, poco, <laughs> and our, our feta cheese, a uh, pecorino, and our parmesan all have a bit of salt in it too. So there's mm. salts already distributed in all the ingredients, gotcha. right? So we don't have to add a lot. But the pepper, not really anywhere else. So what we'll do here, put that in here. We're gonna mix it up and make kind of a, a slurry out of it. So this right here. Okay, is basically what we've got. This is this is our egg and cheese co combination, salt and pepper, a little bit of salt, more pepper. And so we're gonna try it. We're gonna use a spoon and we're gonna taste it. Why not, right? So we're gonna do that. Here you go, sir. Awesome. Just a little bit. I think it's just amazing. It's cheesy, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's got really good. good flavor. So the cool part is when we drop the noodles into this and we mix everything up, all that flavor we're tasting on the spoon is going to spread out all over those noodles. It tastes really good. And so that's the goal. And then it's and then once we get the meat going on. Anyway, 
All right, so we're at the part where we've got our water boiling, okay, because we want it ready. So, because from eight minutes from that, in or around eight minutes from the water boiling, once we drop in that pasta, uh, it should be ready to go. We've got our skillet that's up to temperature, right? And so, and by temperature, we're, we're talking about uh, medium high. And so, what we'll end up doing about the same time is we're going to drop in our meat into the skillet. It would be Kind of pushing that around getting that fat rendered cooking the meat so that we can actually eat it and uh, put it into our pasta dish and then we'll have that spaghetti going at the same time the one thing that we have not done yet is salt the water now the question a lot of people ask is well how much salt do i put in the water here's the thing about pasta pasta will take on the salt flavor of the water meaning if you put a lot of salt in that water, your pasta is going to take on a very salty flavor. Mm. If you put a very little salt in the water, you can barely taste it. Your pasta is going to have very little salty flavor. So this comes back to what, is it, what do I do? I taste what it is I'm cooking. And so I'll put some salt in the water. I'm going to taste it. I want it a very light salt to that water because we have so much salt happening on all these other uh, ingredients. So that's what I'm going to do. And so for me, I'll probably start off with, uh, now, I know I just pulled out a big old box of, of salt, but for me, I put in about a tablespoon, which looks roughly like that. That's it. And so I've got a tablespoon of salt in my water because I don't need it to be heavily salted. And then we're gonna drop in our spaghetti. Well, we'll drop, Chris is gonna drop in the meat and he's gonna push it around, start sauteing it. He's also gonna drop in the spaghetti. We're gonna go ahead and do uh, all 16 ounces um, because we have so much uh, ingredients that we can actually do that in bulk. And then we'll go from there. So go ahead and dump, this in there? dump that in there. Grab that wooden spoon. I'm and so you... excited about this. Here's this. That's pretty amazing. Awesome. So, we're gonna add the pasta. So I'm gonna step in here as cooking coach. When you add your pasta, you wanna let it spread all the way around. So when it's right out of the bag or box, drop it in, let it go, and it'll automatically do that. Once it, once the bottoms get wet, it won't spread out in that kind of So panning. what's the purpose of doing that? Where, where it was in one big log before, mm -hmm. it won't, it won't uh, go into the water evenly. And we want it to kind of sink down into the water on its own and then we'll end up stirring it a little bit and get it going to separate it. Because we got to separate it, otherwise when it's in the water, it'll start sticking to itself. We don't want that. All right, so where we're at right now, we've got the, the meat mostly cooked down. We don't want to put that garlic in there too soon because we don't want to burn the garlic, but because the meat is almost done and we're going to end up pouring that fat off, we want to put the garlic in there because we want that oil and that fat flavored and infused with that garlic. So we're going to go ahead and pour that over in there or, or dump that in there. And so what I'll do is I'll scoop it up with a knife, scrape it in with my finger, and Chris is going to stir that in about, about a minute or so. Okay. And then render that fat off and then we'll be good. And then how do you know when the garlic's done? Is there, garlic does is not it, take long at all to cook. Um, is it just based on time or does it look? Usually, usually the standard cooking time for garlic is when you've got a heated skillet or simmering skillet, about 60 seconds is all you need. Oh wow, that's And really so it really doesn't take long at all. Once you go over that, it starts uh, crisping or burning because it's, it's kind of a fragile uh, ingredient. So what you can do now, go ahead and hold that spoon, pour off that fat, and then we can push that skillet aside. So what happens if some of the garlic or the meat falls into this? Is that okay? Yep. Because it's all going to the same place in the end, our bellies, right? Perfect. So we're gonna let that cool down. You push that off. Turn the uh, skillet burner down. Looks pretty good. All right, so we are just about ready, man. Mm -hmm. Like we've got everything ready. So we've got our noodles, our al dente, so they are, you know, they're not too soft 
but they're not too firm, right? They're mm -hmm. the Goldilocks of noodles. Our oil, we put the finger in there, pretty much leave it. Our meat's cooked, okay? We've got our egg slurry over here. So what we're gonna end up doing, just kind of get things going, at the very end, we're gonna take a, a half cup or a cup of broth, which is about half of this mug. We'll do that at the very end because we wanna use that to help bring all the ingredients together and make it all smoothed out. So right now, <clears throat> we're gonna take our oil, and while we're mixing, we're gonna drizzle that oil. So if you wanna mix, yeah. I'll drizzle. All right, perfect. Let's show them what it looks like. So this is that consistency we're looking for, okay? It's uh, kind of like pancake batter. Almost pancake, a little thicker than pancake batter. And this is what we're gonna end up mixing in with the pasta. And then we're gonna fold that pasta into this. Remember, there's an egg in there, and that egg is gonna take, and it's gonna bind to that pasta noodle and, and, and push that flavor onto it so that every bite you get will have this. And then we're gonna put that meat in there, and then we're gonna end up dusting it with the parsley, Italian parsley. All right, I'm gonna take that, dump it over into here, and then we're gonna take our spoon and we're just we're gonna fold oh and our cheese is melting I guess and that cheese is melting right onto those noodles that egg is cooking because of the heat from those noodles so we don't have to worry about that so what I want you to do is if you'll grab some of that parsley yeah and just a good old handful just just kind of sprinkle it in while I'm stirring. Perfect. Oh yeah. So that's where that color's coming in. Okay. So what I'll do with the broth, just take a little bit, pour it in, just drizzle, not all of it, just a little bit. And what we're doing with that broth is we're just creating a little bit more cream. Creamy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do some more parsley over there. Huh? Awesome. All right. Now, what the heck are we gonna do with our meat? The cool part is we could take this meat, we could dump it right in that bowl, mix it all up. But generally what happens, it all falls to the bottom of the bowl. So rather than that, what we'll do is we'll take it out of the bowl. We'll serve that pasta on a plate. We'll put that meat on top and that's it. Dish is done. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. In all right, so our pasta dish is done. All we need to do is serve. So in order to do that, we're just going to grab some of that pasta. Just going to some of that pasta. Just drop it in that dish. So why do you spin it? Is there... Because it looks prettier. There you go. Presentation is key. So then we will serve up the carbonara portion. All right, you ready? That looks amazing, man. So this is, the, this is the way I do it, and, and you're, you're knocking it out, man. Just, just kind of pull a few noodles on there, twirl that up, get your meat on there. It's like pasta bacon. There goes nothing. Uh, 
Man, that is so good. Oh. And what amazes me is there's cream, but there's no cream. There's no cream. Creamy pasta dish, no cream. Cheese, for sure. Yeah. And this is amazing. And so on the meat, you know, you can, you can do it where you thinly slice the meat and do it that way. It just gives it a different texture. Mm -hmm. And you can, it can be more infused into the, the pasta. So the cool part is, I mean, there's no one right way to do this dish. So you've got permission to just have fun with it. Well, this is something I am going to try. My hand out, and I will text you a picture of the finished product. I look forward to it, man. It's going to be awesome. awesome. Well, Chris, I appreciate you doing this with me. I really, really do. I love the Blue Line Winery. I love your mission that you're you're taking on with with the proceeds of uh, much of the proceeds going yeah. to uh, charitable frontline server causes and and, uh, and our veterans. And and that's why I wanted you to come on. I really appreciate you for doing what you're doing, and thank you for joining me on the show. Well, thanks for having me, Tom. Man, this was amazing. It was awesome. I'm glad you did it. This is awesome. So, I, I, the, you love it, man. It's it's delicious. It's it's hmm. simple. You can knock this out and you can make it a, a, a Gellum household dish, man, mm -hmm. and everybody wins. So you got that. Again, we've talked about it. You got the uh, proteins, you know, the proteins from the meat, but the carbs for just that very active young person in the mm -hmm. house, which you've got several of, right? So yeah. this, this is awesome. This is awesome. So, well, hey, thank you all for joining us. If you like what you're seeing, please click subscribe. Click a, click a like, leave a comment, and uh, be looking for the next video. But this is what this is what I do. I just I want to bring local businesses around Fort Worth, Texas, to you. But at the same time, I just want to bring you simple, easy dishes you can do at home. Serve your family, serve your friends, and just you know feed them with a little love because that's the secret ingredient to all these dishes is love. All right, just do it with love. You're gonna be just fine. All right. I'm Tim Parnell. Until next time.